Have you ever wondered how professional artists can connect two meshes without getting any of their details lost? In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect the most difficult meshes. I'm talking millions of polygons, subdivision stacks and layer data. And if that's not enough, they're going to be different sizes with multiple sub tools attached to them. Hi guys, it's Virtus here. I'm a 3D character artist, art director and games university lecturer. My real expertise lies in forging industry ready artists. After this video, you'll never have a reconnecting issue again. Imagine that kind of flexibility. You definitely want to like this one so you can come back to it in the future. So today we're going to do something that's super, super awesome, which is taking one part of a mesh and connecting it to another. The end result is this one. And you can see if I show you the poly paint, the kind of transitions that we have combining together. Okay, so the first step we want to go through preparation of the model. So making sure that there's nothing that's going to interfere with this intersection. So this human hand and nails are all contained in a folder that's called human arm and the creature component. First, we want to set the scene. So come into geometry and your model might have multiple subdivisions. So obviously that's very useful when you're sculpting. As we're combining two objects, we need to consider that we might be reconstructing all these subdivisions. So for the connection, we're actually going to delete a couple of these. So the first thing I'd usually do is just come to the highest subdivision and see if that division is actually required to be there. So between six and seven, it's kind of giving a little bit of detail. But honestly, if this was a game mesh, which it is, that's not going to transfer very well. So what I'm going to do is pick division number six. And it's going to make the whole process a little bit easier. Something you also might find is you'll have layers. So unfortunately, layers can't transfer over in this process. So basically, at our subdivisions, we're going to come down to Bakel and think of it like applying all those layers to the mesh. OK, so we're on the subdivision that we want. We're going to click Delete Lower, Delete Higher. Now we're going to come to the creature arm. Thankfully, it hasn't got any layers. And for this one at five divisions, roughly two million active points, I'm just going to delete lower. So to make this whole process easier as well and to make it go smoothly, I'm going to Alt click on each one of the meshes, then going to come up to Color and Pick a color for each one of the objects and then come down to fill object. Okay, now I'm going to click on the creature hand and turn that into blue. It'll come apparent why I do this later. So now you'll see the importance of using folders. Basically, what we can do is if we come to this creature arm and press this little cog, we get the ability to transpose the set or transpose everything inside there. So that brings up the gizmo and then also this pizza box set. If you alt click on a specific point and click and drag out, I'm just going to use the wrist as a metric and I'm basically going to pre position this on top of the hand. Hand. Now our aim here is basically to replace the hand out with a creature version. Um, so I'm not focusing on the main arm of the creature. I'm just trying to make sure that these are roughly connecting. The real area import of importance is basically where the wrist connection is going to happen. So you just want to make sure that these are somewhat overlapping and that the hand is aligned well. Obviously, you can make creative differences if you want. But the most important thing here is that all the sub tools are coming along with the edits that we're doing. OK, once that's complete, it's really important that you click this pizza box again. That means you accidentally won't edit multiple things at the same time. Now comes for the splitting of the meshes. So the easiest way to do this is basically approach it one at a time. So hide one of the folders. If you hold control and then click the brush, come to mask lasso and with mask lasso and also the main arm selected we're basically going to draw around the hand so with the selection i suggest slightly overshooting it it's going to be easier to remove clay than it is to add it back on so just overshoot the wrist and the connection just by a little bit once you're happy with that selection just come into sub tools and then down in split you're going to come to split mask points so what it's done is split those selections into two sub tools. You can see it if you press solo and use up and down on the keyboard, you can see which meshes are being selected. So for this, we're just going to press the I for the bit that we don't want. And that basically leaves us with all the components that we're after. So now we're going to do the inversion, just hide the creature by pressing this folder I bring back the human arm or the uh, Simpsons arm again, hold control and just select an area that falls a little bit further than the wrist. Do the exact same. So come down to split and then split by mask points. If that option is grayed out for you, chances that you still have less is activated or potentially that you didn't delete your subdivisions. So remember deleting higher and lower. Now just make sure you have one single subdivision. It's a bit easier to use. Oh dear. OK, right. So I've got an error that's popped up. Um, I might as well show you how to fix this. So it says that there's a file error and some sort of like virus protection. Uh, what this actually means is that your auto saves or your disk save features run out of space. So basically what you want to do is like clear that space out and allow ZBrush to finish what it was doing and do that auto save save. Okay, so it's allowed it to save and basically now it's come back to normal. Okay, so here we're going to split the mask points, we're going to come into solo so we can see what we've selected. 
come up to the eye and just going to hide that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a third mesh and basically all the details and information that you've worked hard on is going to be transferred to this mesh and we're going to try and reduce the detail loss that happens along the way. The great thing about this workflow is you're fully in control of the entire process. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to get both of these and for the time being, I'm not interested in these additional components. So I'm just going to hide them. So that's anything that's floating as a sub object that's been included in your folder structure. So with these two separate assets that are in two separate folders, I'm going to alt click on the, the yellow arm and then I'm going to come to duplicate. That's going to create a duplicate in our sub objects. I'm going to alt click the blue creature hand and I'm also going to duplicate that. You'll see that it's created a second version just beneath, which is in the original folder. Uh, we want it to come out of that. So usually what I do is I just hold control and press down on the keyboard many, many times and basically until it goes all the way to the bottom. So now just so we don't get confused, I'm going to hide the creature arm folder and the human arm folder. And now we're working with our duplicates. So I'm going to select the topmost one. Now, if you come into merge, we can either press merge visible, which is going to merge anything that has the eye activated. Uh, what I usually prefer to do is just use merge down. So what it's done is it's going to combine yellow into blue and it's going to put it onto one subtool. So really important to note these are one subtool, but they're not the same geometry as in they're not welded together. So they do have open faces. Uh, we basically want to close this all up. Now, anything we're working on with this mesh, don't worry about losing any detail. Uh, what we're really focusing on is the form and the structure and closing those holes up. All the detail is already maintained in the folders that we have. So don't worry for anything like that if you if you use your smoothing. So I'm going to switch to a brush called Move Topological. And the aim for this process is basically find your own personal mean or basically the midpoint of where you're going to be joining these together. So obviously these are completely different sets of anatomy. Uh, you're going to have to be slightly artistically creative here. So it's just a case of pushing these together until they look correct or they um, have a seamless transition between each other. So I'll speed through that process now. The most important bit to focus on is just make sure that these open sides are hidden. So wherever you see open faces, just get a really big move brush and just pull that all the way back. If the selection gets a little bit annoying, remember you can just hold control and shift. And then if you tap once, because they're in poly groups, it's going to hide the other section. Uh, you can also do interesting things if you hold control and tap. That's going to mask what's shown and then we can hold control and shift. Tap on the canvas, that's going to bring everything back. So that can be useful if you just really want to focus on one section at a time. And you can see how the colors uh, are coming in really important here. So the cool thing about that is we've got the blue section masked and the yellow section unmasked. What I can do is just control. It's going to invert that. So it just means that I can work on one at a time back and forth without uh, too much chaos. My suggestion when moving geometry, and I always say this to my students, students is really trying to focus on little taps. So you don't want to do these broad movements because you're going to get a lot of distortion. Just do many, many little taps and you'll have more control when you're using and moving things. Okay, I'll leave it a little bit messy just so I can show how you can clean that up potentially. Before we move on to the next process, just in case something happens, can rename our duplicate Dynamesh. And then with this second version, you can probably predict what's going to happen. Going to come into geometry and then we're going to use Dynamesh. So those unfamiliar to Dynamesh, this is basically going to fuse all the geometry get together and basically attempt to close any holes that we had. So before you click that button, I also suggest just saving before you do the process, get in the habit of that. Uh, so you can click nine and that's going to auto save it really quickly. So once that's complete, we can see a couple of observations. So it's closed the hole and try its best. And you can really see the effect when you come to smooth. It starts to smooth out that geometry. Remember, we've got the other one visible, so I'm going to hide that so it's not interfering and also potentially turn off poly uh, poly paints. But sometimes it's cool just to see what sort of effect it had. So at this stage, just look at the mesh and basically repair any pieces that are poking out a little bit too much. Again, remember, we're not too fussed about losing detail at this point because we're basically going to go through a, pro uh, a projection process and get those all back. There's also some additional techniques I use along the way just so we can keep a majority of the information that we put in there. Bits that really poke out. Remember, you can use different brushes like trim dynamic. That's basically going to get rid of any sharp edges. So you trim dynamic in combination with smoothing. Now the target for this process is just to have one continuous mesh that doesn't really have anything that's poking out. So it's up to you. You might find that this trans transition might be frustrating. So now's the perfect time to fix it. I'll just get something like a clay and then go over it very lightly. And the aim for this is just to make sure that it looks like one continuous mesh. Now for some people that might be good enough. You know, if you plan that you're going to be doing details on top of it, you know, that's reasonable enough. Uh, to be honest, you could go through and just start to redesign on top of that. That's totally cool. I'll show you a, a deeper process. So maybe you've got some really intricate details there that you wanted to save and you don't want to repeat that process. Or maybe there's a very specific poly paint on there. So these 
The following techniques I'm going to go through is really important for understanding how to do the cleanest combination of two assets. So I'm going to duplicate the Dynamesh, I'm going to rename this target, and you'll use this process a lot in your character career. So I'm going to bring back the creature arm folder and the human arm folder, and you'll see that our secondary version has deviated quite a lot from the original. So with the target or the original, I'm going to go color. I'm just going to, I usually like to fill this in with a red or a very bright red. Now with the original selected, what we're going to do is basically move this back to the secondary target that we made. And you'll know you're doing a good job because you'll see a lot of Z fighting. So for example, when we move the blue back into the red, you can see that it's fighting for space. So a really useful thing to do for that, say for example, this yellow section, it's going to select the yellow section. And then with the move tool, what I can do, obviously I can move it side to side. If I'm holding move and now if I hold alt at the same time, you can see that it comes out and back based on its um so basically it's only coming back and forth that'll stop you doing too many distortions so here what you're focusing on is basically which pieces of detail you want to keep and which pieces you don't so maybe you want a bit more skin detail from the original human whereas down here you want a little bit more from the original creature the only thing you've really got to remember is which colors you're going for so remember that the blue and the yellow we're trying to match that to the red one so for this example i'm just going to take the blue and bring it down because i want some more of that skin detail to come through to our new version. You can also hide the red target and then just make sure that these are cleaned up. Basically, the more work you put in now, uh, the less cleanup you're going to have when it comes to retargeting and projecting. So anything that shows a border, we're eventually going to smooth out and everything, everything will be okay. So another thing you can do, and this will save you a lot of cleanup time, is basically select your red target then you're going to come into transparent mode. It's going to turn both of these into a sort of ghost. And then with the move tool, you can just basically move this around so the mesh is a little bit more consistently overlapping your other pieces of meshes. It just makes it a little bit more accurate and requires a little less cleanup when it comes down the line. So that's something I usually like to do just to make sure that they're really fighting against each other. With the target selected, we're gonna come down to project. And in project, there's loads of these options. And with project, what it's gonna do is gonna search for other sub tools around it. And it's basically gonna steal that detail information and then project it back onto itself. So whenever you see something like a distance line, all it means is the distance at which it's going out to look for those meshes. So in our case, we've really overlapped them quite close. So that distance will be really small which is a benefit to us but just in case what you can do is increase this distance to quite a, a size and it shouldn't matter because you've only got these meshes showing before you press project just make sure you have the original arm and the original blue hand and that will be indicated by the eyes or to the right of the sub tool and then with the target that's selected that's obviously going to be the selection for our projection again maybe now to say now you'll see what's happened here uh we have the what used to be the red target selected and it's transferred all the poly paint data so you can see which details have gone to which sections it's most evident if we come to this paintbrush and then just hide the poly paint and now we can see just the geometry now if i hold a smooth across this surface you can see that it's now one continuous mesh so it's successfully combined now there may be places where these artifacts are so you could either just smooth those out or what a better thing to do is just make sure that in your original placements that there's no sort of like gaps so you won't get those to start with now you can see quite a seam here because the original hand didn't have that much detail to start with in comparison to the human arm where it had loads of poor details but the primary focus for this a majority of your original sculpt so with other workflows you'll often lose a bit of detail which can be annoying uh, but this is the closest you can physically get to keeping all your details so after this uh, there is a way of basically blurring the lines in between these two now you can use your alphas that you used on the previous mesh uh, but if you don't have those there's a useful feature so you want to come to brushes and then extractor you're just going to select that to make this gray so it's a little bit easier to see now to smooth out this transition we just want to blur it a little bit so with the extractor drag rectangle on i'm going to press g and now i'm going to select part of the details that i want to transfer over back onto this hand. So this is all pretty generic, but I'm just going to tap here and drag a rectangle out. It's going to draw a little circle. Now what's happening there is it's looking and basically collecting all that height animation. They're really useful for blurability, like repair something. So once that's done, we now have the ability with the normal mouse click to basically draw that detail. This process is a little bit hit and miss. So say, for example, it's picking up a bit of medium detail, especially on something that's like a curved, like an arm. Really great for flat surfaces. But I just wanted to show you the worst case scenario and give you some tools to repair that just in case you didn't have the original alphas. But hopefully, you know, if you created this arm yourself, pour details in your alpha kit, which you can just go over. But it's not too much of a 
a, a worry here. So also remember at the same time, uh, we went through a Dynamesh process. In between there, you can do a Z remesh if you want to obtain your stacks back, so your subdivisions. So just after you finish a Dynamesh, add some divisions and then use the projection on that Z remesher. So that's just an additional option if you want some more details. Okay, so really cool thing, because we kept everything in folders, remember all those bits of nail and stuff, we can basically come into that folder and bring them back. And because we pre-aligned it, we get to keep all that alignment. We don't have to mess around. So we've got all our originals, but this time the hand has been connected and all those details have remained the same. So hopefully you found that process really impressive. I find it super cool that you can keep so many details when you're combining things. I know often it's a very messy task, but if you break it down methodically, it can become quite easy. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you leave a like so you can always refer back to it when it comes to your history in your liked videos. And also subscribe, going to be releasing loads of videos based on becoming the greatest character as you can be. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.